Hey guys, I'm on fire and excited about today's video. We're going to open that hive up again. We're going to take another frame out of open larvae. We're going to test for mites the same way. Some of you recommended that I really roll those bees vigorously in that powdered sugar and for to do it longer. So we're going to see if that will do the trick to get that powdered sugar test to equal the alcohol wash. Let's go. We don't want to enter the queen into our sample. You got open larvae, so anytime you have some open larvae, there's always a possibility the queen could be on that frame. Nothing there, so let's go ahead and shake them in this box. All right. Hopefully the other bees will just make their way back over here. Wait a few minutes, at least a minute, for bees to make it back. Go ahead and bring some smoke around into the hive. I think we have 300 bees that we're going to get in our sample. We've got our powdered sugar jar with, I put one tablespoon of powdered sugar here. And for today, I lowered the line because yesterday we had too many, 491, not 300. I kept the lid on here so the powdered sugar wouldn't clump up too bad. Now in today's study, what we're going to do is gather the bees and we're going to roll them around in the powdered sugar for 10 minutes to see if we can get more mites to fall off in a powdered sugar shake test. Let's let a few uh, fly out of that because we're a little ahead of our line. Let's see what it looks like. Let's get a few out, okay. I think that's more, still more than 300. All right, I like that. So let's just think that is 300. Now, we'll just roll these beads. I used less powdered sugar today, and we're going to let these roll around. Now, we had some feedback on the comments. Everybody had an opinion. And some people said I didn't slosh them around, roll them around enough. Other people said I need to be more vigorous and shake the mites off more vigorously. Studies have shown, and I can't really cite those studies, but I have seen the studies that show that bees that are vigorously shaken in these powdered sugar shakes like this, these tests, may actually only live half of their lifespan. That this may be uh, really hard on the bees. Another reason to consider alcohol wash, if indeed we are shortening the lives of these bees, Maybe it's better to uh, just sacrifice them quickly in an alcohol wash rather than injure them. Okay, here we are today from the same colony that we uh, sampled yesterday. We lowered our lines. We think we got a, a, few, a little bit of a fewer amount of uh, bees here. And we have been uh, rolling them around for almost 10 minutes now. We're going to give them a little bit of a roll around now. And we are going to start shaking them uh, once we have them coated pretty good uh, with this powdered sugar. Uh, I'm doing this because some of you suggested that I need to do it longer and I need to be more vigorous in how I'm shaking those mites off. So any attempt to see that the powdered sugar might go ahead and uh, equal the number of the alcohol wash is a test worth doing. So I appreciate you leaving those comments in my last video. And so the bees look, actually, they look pretty healthy. They're not wet. Sometimes you put powdered sugar on them. They can each uh, kind of get rid of any um, nectar or they may, they may disperse what's in their honey tank. And they, it start, they all start getting wet. All right, so yesterday we had a total. We had three that came off during the powdered sugar shake. And when I did an alcohol wash later, we had another uh, five. So that gave us a total of eight. So we're going to see if this is going to give us any more than the traditional three that we got off the day before. If we got eight off of these and none off of the alcohol wash, then we were going to have to start thinking, well, maybe powdered sugar is the way to go. But we're going to just test it out and see. Watch this video to the end to see the results of this new study uh, actually getting them to groom themselves. So the idea is if these bees have powdered sugar on them and we give them time to groom themselves, 
that the mites are being groomed off of those bees. It seems like it's a, a it seems like a good idea. On the other hand, to me, I question um, if they are being groomed off, then where are they going? They're probably getting right back on a bee. So I'm not sure if that theory really holds true. But we'll give it a chance to, to work. All right, I think it's been long enough. It's been 10 minutes of them grooming themselves in this powdered sugar. And I can tell all of them are covered very good with powdered sugar. So what we're going to do now is shake them vigorously, trying not to injure them, but let's give it a go. We're going to continue shaking bees out of this powdered sugar test. Looks like some more are dropping out, so we're excited about the results of today's study. By the way, I want to remind you, please subscribe. You can see I'm working hard for you guys. I'm on your side, helping you to become a better beekeeper and make fewer mistakes. So please subscribe. Now let's keep shaking. Well, it looks like to me that I only see one mite right there, and that mite is moving around. Question is, should I add a little more powdered sugar and douse them a little better, or is that enough? I'm going to add another tablespoon of powdered sugar to coat them a little bit better. Eh, maybe not. I mean, if you're going to do this much work and put the bees through this, I really think it might be better just to do the alcohol wash. So anyway, we've got these, uh, these bees have now been in this powdered sugar another tablespoon for about another, almost another 10 minutes. And we're going to see if more, any more will fall off. Oh, we got one more. Let's keep doing it vigorously. Well, one thing is certain, mites do fall off with powdered sugar. Now, do all of them fall off? That, it, that's probably our big problem. It doesn't appear that all of them do fall off with powdered sugar. But obviously, some do. Many fall off when, when, when this, is a, this kind of approach is, is given. But again, we're, we're really just doing our best here to get as many mites off as we can. That way we make sure that our study from yesterday uh, wasn't done too quickly and we just failed to get as many mites off as we could. All right, so what we're looking at as far as mites, let's make sure uh, that we don't miscount. That is a mite there. Let's see if I can just move them out of the water, put them over here. They might crawl off the page. Might crawl up a wall and leave us. Look at that, look at that mite crawl. All right, one, two. Right, here's number three. Get that third one, huh? Okay, three, one, two, three. Here's another one. Here's number four. Okay, here's number four. So one, two, three, four. Here's one, let's scoot. That's on the end of my pencil. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Get this one out of the water. So we can see them better. Well, I can't, can't move them very easily. All right, what do we got over here? Anything else? Here's one way over here. Uh, 
Let's see, is that another one? On the end of my pencil? I feel like it is. I can't get it off my pencil. Oh! Oh, I can't tell if that's a mite. I'm going to look at that more closely. And I know there's one here, so let's work it over um, to... Okay, so there we go. So we actually have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven mites. Uh, this is interesting. If you've never had a close-up view of, of uh, bee poop, that's bee poop right there. And that's a grain of pollen right here. All right, so let's inspect to make sure no, no other mites are floating. I don't see any more. So, well, we did gain numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a small one, but it is definitely a mite. Um, so there we go. Now we got to do the alcohol wash to see if we gain any more. Let's pour the alcohol in here so we have the exact number. It'll be a little more messier. Uh, let's do one more shake since they have had a little more time. See if we can. Oh, we got number eight. All right, we got an eight fell off. Now this would be interesting if we get zero mites from this alcohol wash. Wow, this is insane. Okay, boom, there it is. The results are final. On this one, I'm gonna scan the barrel really good to make sure nothing is in the canister. No, there are no mites here. Uh, there's a few pieces of debris, but too small. So what we have here is one and two. Wow, I'm glad we repeated this because this gives us a total of eight, nine, ten. Wow, guys, this has really been interesting for me, and uh, I'm amazed that we have done it on the second day by shaking the bees longer and longer in that powdered sugar shake, and we actually got uh, eight mites to fall off in the powdered sugar, and then we did an alcohol wash, and we got two more. So that really puts us in a, a different light from what we previously did. That's why it's important to do a lot of studies, isn't it? I mean, you have to do a lot of controlled studies, repeat the process over and over. That's what science does. I'm trying to stay out of the sun. But science does uh, studies over and over, controlled. You know, they just have to do a lot of tests to really before you can make a conclusive argument. And so right now, we're back to thinking that powdered sugar isn't that much off. I mean, we only gained two more off because we shook them much more vigorously and we waited longer. We gave them two level tablespoons. I did one tablespoon and then I gave another tablespoon after about 10 or 15 minutes and let them sit another 10 or 15 minutes. We got one more to fall off. So uh, what we're gonna do now is a similar study, but what we're gonna do is fill this back up, clean everything up, that's gonna be tomorrow. Fill everything back up. We're gonna do another shake of the same beehive. We're getting the, the same numbers. This is, that's encouraging. I mean, we're one short today, but that's to be expected to be one off, but the, pretty consistent on the, the mite level. So to, we're gonna do another test and we're gonna actually do the powdered sugar shake, see if we can get close to 10 or 11 again, which is the accurate amount we feel. And then we're actually gonna let the bees go put them in a box or something and see if they will be able to fly away, uh, seeing of how much we injure them, trying to just vigorously shake them for 20 minutes or so. Again, I don't know how many beekeepers, I mean, it's another moral philosophy question. If you don't wanna kill bees, powdered sugar looks like could actually be used to get you pretty close to your numbers. Uh, but if you wanna be very fast about it and you don't mind sacrificing bees, I think the alcohol wash would be very quick way. And that's gonna be something that we're gonna find in uh, people that have a lot of beehives. Let's do the math on what we found. We had a total of 10 mites and I counted all the bees again in our samples. This time, no bees escaped the powdered sugar sample when I, when I did it by pouring the alcohol on 
the bees when they were in the powdered sugar jar. So I counted 361 bees. So we got a little closer. We dropped this line down a little bit, and you saw in the video we worked a little bit harder to make sure the bees weren't over this line. So we were within 61 of 300, and so that was a good count for us. So you might want to kind of get an idea. It looks like it's just uh, maybe an inch and a half off the bottom of this pint-sized jar that would bring you to about 300 bees, pretty close to it. So we're going to do the math on 361. So all together, we had a total of 10 mites. Eight were found in the powdered sugar shake by us shaking it vigorously for well over 10 to 15 minutes. Also adding another round of a tablespoon of powdered sugar and shaking them some more gave us one more. So anyway, we had a total count. Uh, we had two more that fell off during the alcohol wash. And that's pretty promising. I'm going to repeat that study over and over again for a few more times just to make sure that this is consistent. So this gives us a total of 10 mites out of 361 bees. So let's do the math on that. We're going to take 10 and we're going to add two zeros to it and divide it by 361. And that gives us a mite infestation level of 2.77. Now that's 1% higher than our sample of yesterday. Why that's different, it could be a lot of reasons. It could be where, the, where we got the bees from. It could have been uh, the amount of mites, you know, that vary frame to frame, phoretic mites or mites below the caps emerging and all that. Um, but it, it, getting us within 1%, I know that's a, kind of a strong variable, but at least we know that we're getting almost a, a consistent feedback on that mite load. Join me in my next video because we're going to go into that hive and apply Apigar to see if we can bring that 2.6% down. Going into winter, getting ready now, coming out of summer, going into fall. Winter means we need a lot of bees of winter physiology that aren't carrying viruses that are transmitted by these mites. So we're trying to get our mite load down before we start raising an enormous amount of bees of winter physiology. That'd be a great video for you to watch in my next video. I'm gonna show you how to use Apigard. I'll demonstrate it. We'll actually apply it to that hive. I'll see you in that video. Thanks for watching.